Sean Hannity on Fox News, safe haven for all things racist, rinse and repeat. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about the, 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 the black pastors. Yeah, that'll do it. We did it to Obama. It, it didn't work then either. Here it is. Probably also doesn't want to talk about her beloved pastor. Oh, you're going to love this. We have a brand new Reverend Jeremiah Wright. His name, Reverend Dr. Amos Brown. Now, last year on the official vice presidential Instagram account, Kamala posted a glowing picture of the Reverend with the caption, quote, oh, it's always an honor to spend time with my pastor, Reverend Dr. Amos Brown of the Third Baptist Church of San Francisco. He remains a source of inspiration to me always. Now, this is the same pastor that told the San Francisco Chronicle, quote, I know America. America is a racist country. And the very same pastor who blamed racist America for 9-11-01 only six days after we lost 2,977 of our fellow Americans. He said, quote, oh, America, what did you do? What did you do two weeks ago when I stood at the World Conference on Racism when you wouldn't show up? In fact, she has echoed many of the reverend's beliefs. For example, Brown sits on the California Reparations Task Force. And as of 2019, well, Kamala Harris enthusiastically supported reparations. Does she stand by her pastor of 25 years who believes America is a racist country filled with bad people that deserve 9-11? Will anyone ask Kamala any of these questions? Y'all tried that issue with Obama. It's not working with Harris. We fell for it then. Hopefully nobody is falling for it now. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Put up the picture full mass. I remember when candidate Obama held a press conference in order to denounce his pastor, Jeremiah Wright. I was not proud of him in that moment. It was the political pressure. The Clinton machine was even part of that madness. The Republicans were part of that madness. So what is Sean Hannity doing? This is the dusted off conservative playbook back from 2008 to tie the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee to a black pastor that they don't like. They would like to pick the black pastors for black people. That's what they want. They, they want to say, we approve of these black preachers. Now I have more, let's keep the picture up. Uh, if you remember, President Barack Obama, the right wing and some Democrats tried to torpedo his campaign because of his pastor, Jeremiah Wright. The pastor in a fiery sermon told the truth. He said, no, not God bless America, God damn America. Why? Because he was talking about judgment. He was talking about cause and effect, reaping what you sow. There's no blessing in evil, there's damnation in evil. There's more. Wright also said, 9-11 was chickens coming home to roost after America's history supporting state terrorism against the Palestinians and black South Africans. But once again, terrorism is a mindset that is created by the permeation of policy implemented, uh, implemented internationally. Hannity pointed out, Harris's association with Pastor Brown in doing so, uh, he even invoked rights. So he, he, he got them both in. There you go, Hannity, that'll do it. That's going to turn the table here. Um, but will Hannity say anything about these pastors? She represents uh, something which I believe is probably the amalgam of the spirit of Jezebel and in a way that'll be even, even more ominous than Hillary, because she'll bring a racial component and she's younger. They needed someone devoid of anything that could uh, possibly get in the way of their agenda, and they found her. And that's why demonic power is at work, and that's why 
God spared Trump's life for such a time as this. She's going to stir up the race wars by playing the race card. She's going to stir up the gender wars by playing the woman against man. She's going to go back and tear open the wounds in America to say Trump is an angry white racist with a dangerous MAGA movement mm. in order to in order to rub. This is what the devil's choice is. I guess is what I'm saying. Wow. Um, in response to uh, this madness, there's a pastor who is a real man of God. Here it is. On Kamala becoming the presidential nominee, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to confess. <laughs> I, I wasn't too happy about that. But I'm all in now. I'm, 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 I'm 100% now for this reason. This, this representative from, from Tennessee, sorry, Connie, from Tennessee, he called her a DEI candidate. And then they start calling her color. Then they start calling her out of her name. And as a black man, I can't let no white man talk about no sister like that. And, and I not take offense to it. Because who is more disqualified than Donald Trump? And Republicans are all in because he is the avatar for their grievance. How qualified does a black person have to be? Graduated at the top of her class at Howard, went to law school, was attorney general of a state, a United States senator, a vice president of the United States, but she's not qualified? I'm all in. Because I'm not going to let any white man tell me how I ought to feel about a black person. Stony the road we've tried. You see, this is why I laugh during my critique and commentary of Hannity and crew. Because I know what their energy is doing. It is exciting, the required energy on the other side. That pastor said, I wasn't even happy about this whole move with Biden stepping down. However, after listening to the bigots talk about my sister, I'm all in. And he said a profound statement. I mean, it was quite gripping. It touched my soul. He said they're all in with Trump because Trump is an avatar for their grievances. And he's correct, which means the things that are happening are bigger than Trump. Trump is a personification, but there's this energy, this, this bigoted, toxic energy that Donald Trump is benefiting from as a human being, as a person. So that also means that VP Kamala Harris is my avatar for my grievances. She's your avatar for your grievances. She's not perfect, no one is. There is no perfect one among us. But when you understand it from that perspective, that these dynamics are larger than the personalities presented, you understand the battle. And you also understand the assignment. All right, yes, my thoughts here. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, these religious leaders are always going to be controversial whenever they're in the political arena. But the reasons that Hannity has chosen to highlight as to why Kamala Harris's pastor is controversial has nothing to do with religion, and we know that. Yeah, they act like these people. We're talking about Obama and Kamala Harris, for example. Uh, these people who are apparently qualified enough to be the president of the United States 
can't think for themselves. Whatever this pastor says, that is what Kamala believes. She endorses everything her pastor says and believes 100%. Kamala is just the puppet and her pastor is the puppet master. And this is all particularly ironic coming from a Republican, Sean Hannity, considering that the Republicans, they want more religious influence in government, not less. And they're indistinguishable, the Republican Party, from things like the Heritage Foundation and from the evangelical movement at this point. And they've really been honing in on the racial aspects of this pastor because they know that their audience is kind of racist, right? Whether they admit it or acknowledge it or not. These are the same people who are good Christian people, morally superior than all of the other non-Christians in this country, but they can't fathom the possibility that their savior might not even be a white man. They cannot escape how racist it all is even when they try to and they do try to. Yeah, I mean, these folks lied on Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, they lied on God. They lied about the Bible. Mm-hmm. They lied about all of it. You damn right, they lie about politics.